News about a YouTuber and a reality TV star being booked for supplying snake venom to a Noida rave party has brought to attention snakes and venom and partying and drugs. The four going together seems impossible, but apparently it is happening. The use of snake and other reptilian venom for extended periods of high is not a new phenomenon in India, but this particular case shows just how mainstream it has become, even though it is still fairly uncommon. Using snake venom as a drug to get high is something that has been reported only from India in the medical literature so far, and all reports have been single cases. So what exactly is happening here? Snake venom is venom, it's a toxin. And when a person is bitten by a venomous snake, they will experience extremely unpleasant effects to the circulatory and the nervous system or both. And of course, they will likely die without medical intervention. But what's going on in these parties then? The police have reportedly seized 20 milliliters of snake venom, five cobras, a python, two two-headed snakes and a rat snake in this particular case. So how does the venom of some of these snakes reportedly cause a high and not death? The answer lies in the molecules that reptilian venom binds to in our body and in snake venom's high medical potency. Or does it? Snake venom is an unconventional psychotropic substance and it is administered by holding up a venomous snake like cobra or a viper and prompting them to deliver a small bite to your tongue. The result is described as a high that can last a long time and it includes typical psychotropic characteristics like mood alteration, dissociation, increased sense of euphoria and other such symptoms which are associated especially with opioid use. Snakes can bite a person's tongue or ear lobes or lips or even the feet but the bite that is delivered is non-fatal. Many snakes typically tend to use what is called a dry bite where they bite a person but discharge only very little venom. This is possibly what is happening here. When snake venom enters the bloodstream, it binds to receptors that release chemicals like serotonin. These are called metabolites. They are molecules that are involved and responsible for the metabolic processes in our body for conversion of food to energy and other such activities. Venom also releases bradykinin that relaxes muscles and other molecules that affect inflammation and muscle contractions in our body, ultimately relaxing the body. Users have reported feeling drowsy after snake bites and controlled snake bites in these parties. Other molecules enhance euphoric and peaceful sensations in the body and also release some pharmacological molecules in our body that have been inhibited and these molecules then further amplify such sensations. Clinical reports have emerged of individuals being addicted to snake venom in India over the last couple of decades, but clinical data available is very sparse. Researchers have noted in all of these case studies that many young people resort to using snake venom as a substitute for opioid use and alcohol dependency. Most substances used for recreational purposes such as alcohol and opioids can be lethal when consumed above a certain threshold. That's how people overdose or get poisoned by alcohol. Snake venom has been associated with rave parties in India and very obviously its abuse carries an extremely high risk of death. Blood clots, paralysis, kidney failure, disability and of course even death occurs in most cases without timely medical help when a snake bites to attack. However, those who use snake venom for a high deliberately take a bite with reduced concentrations and even improved potency of venom which they achieve by injecting other molecules into the snake. While we know all of this, there still isn't any studies. There have been less than 10 cases in the medical literature about recreational use. 
Still, there is no consensus as to whether venom actually produces these effects, produces a high, or if the experience is just psychosomatic, as many users are also under the influence of opioids or other substances. It is unknown whether venom is capable of producing psychedelic effects like hallucinations, and none have been reported so far in the literature. When a snake bite occurs, the venom passes into the body and eventually the bloodstream through the snake's fangs. In parties, people hold up the snake to their faces and make it administer a smaller, less lethal bite. But this risk might not be entirely worth it because it is still unclear just how much of a psychotropic effect snake venom has on the body and the brain due to lack of studies. Venom is a toxin and most things that we consume recreationally are, alcohol being one of the biggest ones. But Venom is a known danger, a known toxin, and we know that it kills. Snake venom typically in the body is of three types, neurotoxic, which affects the nervous system, cytotoxic, which punctures holes through our cells, and also hemotoxic, which kills red blood cells, and the less common myotoxic, which damage and paralyze muscles and tissues. Cobras, for example, are neurotoxic and their venom disrupts the signal flow between our nerves and the brain, leading to paralysis and strokes and other cardiovascular issues. Vipers are cytotoxic, affecting the circulatory system and killing blood cells, making blood too clotted to flow or too thin to prevent bleeding out. Sea snakes in India have myotoxins in their venom, which paralyzes muscles. Venom of all of these snakes consists of a powerful cocktail of thousands of protein and enzyme molecules which bind to various receptors in our body, especially receptors of the nervous system. The concentration of these different components creates different effects on the bloodstream and the body. But a snake attacking naturally and recreationally is not the only way venom has been injected into the body. Venom contains medicinal properties. Cobra venom has been used in ancient India for therapeutic purposes and is a source of many molecules in medicine even today. Reptile venom is widely used in medicine to not only develop anti-venom to protect against the effect of snake bites, but also for other drugs. Venom is used in the treatment of heart problems, including hypertension, stroke, for pulmonary embolism, for development of antiplatelet drugs, and to develop drugs that reduce clot formation during surgeries. The venom of many species is also a strong analgesic or a painkiller and is often used as a substitute for morphine for chronic pain. Lizard venom is used for regulating insulin production and treatment of diabetes, while leech venom is used to treat arthritis and infections during surgeries. Scorpion venom is often used in cancer treatment and many people following pop culture news would know that bee venom is very popular for cosmetic treatments on the face. While such legitimate uses of venom might become popular, there isn't enough scientific data and using snake venom as a trend is of course bad for the world. Recreational use contributes to the smuggling of snakes, many of which are endangered, leading to the deaths of thousands of different types of snake species every year. Like most things that seem to give humans pleasure, the activity itself destroys the environment and ecosystem. If the use of venom becomes even more popular, there will be more studies on its actual effects because it would be highly dangerous and unethical to conduct a study where snakes bite humans with venom. But until then, concerned scientists and herpetologists are just going to have to wait and listen to first-person accounts from rave parties for what low-dose venom does to the body.